It is very simple. Samyama is divine judo that takes all desires and elevates them to divine status, which then manifest as all love and support for everyone around us. This kind of surrender is not weakness. It is the greatest strength that can be found in life, nourished by the infinite residing within us. So, the fear about Samyama being abused and used for wrong purposes is a myth. It is not possible with right practice. We can say that Samyama is morally self-regulating, meaning that the deeper we go into it, the more moral strength we will have coming out from within us. If it is not right practice, not letting go into stillness, it is not Samyama, and the power coming out will be much less. Samyama is not projection of personal power. If there is projection involved in a practice, it is something else. It can be misguided ego, the dark arts, whatever we want to call it. It isn't Samyama. If there is a danger, it is in the personal projection of power. Many of the world's ills have come from this. Samyama is a great undoer of egocentric adventures that have caused so much misery in the world. Correct practice of Samyama is infallible in its results, and incorrect practice of Samyama will not work. It is very safe. So let's begin Samyama, and all that our heart craves deep within will be given to us, and much more. I am experiencing fast breathing and physical movement sometimes during Samyama. What is it? When we systematically let go of our sutras in Samyama practice, inner silence will begin to move inside us in particular ways that reflect the flavor of the sutras we are using, giving rise to a variety of sensations, thoughts, and feelings. These will be the result of purification occurring in our nervous system. The movement of inner silence outward can also be experienced as energy moving through us which can give rise to some physical symptoms, such as alterations in breathing and physical movements. Sometimes we call physical symptoms automatic yoga, since they may resemble yogic maneuvers and breathing practices. By automatic yoga, we do not mean practices we must follow when they happen. The way we handle such symptoms is to neither favor them nor try to push them out. We just easily favor the practice we are doing over such experiences. In this case, the easy procedure of our Samyama practice. It is possible for the symptoms to become dramatic, such as the body beginning to shake and hop on our meditation seat during the Lightness Sutra. If this happens, we should take necessary precautions to protect ourselves and the furniture by avoiding such activity on a fragile bed and having suitable padding underneath ourselves on a solid surface during our Samyama. While our practice might seem chaotic at times, there is a method to it, and a lot of intelligence manifesting from within, along with the energy. Still, it is up to us to take whatever precautions we feel are necessary to assure our safety. This is true for all yoga practices, and is an aspect of self-pacing. Physical movements are caused by the friction of inner energies moving through our not yet fully purified nervous system. The further along the path we go, the more purification and opening we will have, and the less likely extreme physical movements will be. Then the experiences will be more along the lines of abiding inner silence, ecstatic bliss, and outpouring divine love. Along the path of purification and opening, we can have all sorts of things going on. It goes with the territory, and we deal with things as they come up in ways that assure our ongoing progress with comfort and safety. I am filled with bright light and pleasurable energy during Samyama, and for some time after. Is this the right result? This is another way our purification and opening can be experienced. 
It means we are experiencing inner energy flow with less friction involved, which can give rise to experiences of inner light and ecstasy. Such experiences can come and go along the path of inner purification and opening. Having this kind of experience does not mean we have arrived. More than likely, we will continue to have many ups and downs along the way. It is a preview of what our life will be like permanently in the long term. The main thing is to continue with daily practices and favor that over any lovely experiences that might distract us from doing the very practices that have created the experiences. There are good things happening. It is our practice that is causing these experiences. So always favor the practice. Why do I feel irritable and edgy after my Samyama practice sometimes? Irritability can result if we are overdoing in our practices or coming out too fast, not taking adequate rest at the end of our sittings. One of the most common causes of irritability in activity is getting up too soon after practices. So be sure to address that first. It is very important to take at least 5 to 10 minutes of rest after our Samyama practice. If we have a place to lie down during that time, it is good. If irritability persists after practices, even when we are taking good rest before getting up, it can be overdoing in our practices. In the case of Samyama, if two repetitions of our sutras is leaving us with irritability, then we can drop back to one repetition for a few sessions and see if that will help. Or, if we have forged ahead and are doing more than two repetitions of our sutras and are having difficulties in our daily activity, then we should scale back a bit until things stabilize. Irritability can also be caused by overdoing in any of our practices, so it is good to take a broad view of all practices we are doing and consider making adjustments in the practices that are most likely causing the excess energy flow and purification. We will discuss the art of self-pacing in our practices more in the next sections. What is the ultimate purpose of doing Sanyama? As mentioned, whatever our purpose may be, be it for self or others, it will be good enough reason to be doing Samyama, assuming we have been cultivating a foundation of inner silence beforehand. From there, the process of Samyama itself will take us steadily toward our own higher purpose. If we are looking for powers, Samyama will deliver them, but not necessarily in the way we may be expecting. When we engage in Samyama, we may not always get exactly what we want, but we will always get what we need to advance on our spiritual path. Ultimately, Samyama, in conjunction with our other yoga practices, will lead us to enlightenment, which is abiding inner silence, ecstatic bliss, and outpouring divine love. 